Hi friends, so in this session what we will be looking at is redirecting uh, the error records that we get while loading data from flat file into uh, our data tables. So what I will be using here is our employee table that we have uh, where we were loading files from flat files and, and uh, I am using the same SSIS package. Uh, so what this SSIS package contains uh, is it is going to load data from this directory and, and its subdirectories uh, for the employee data into uh, the employee table in my SQL server. So uh, a demo, demo run of this uh, package is something like this. Uh, while the data is being loaded into uh, our SQL server table and later it is being archived into the folder. Uh, that's a very simple requirement. So if we look at our employee table what we have here is we have seven records uh, with their employee department and salary details uh, being loaded into the employee table now if we look at the archive both the files have been archived uh, at the archive folder so uh, this is a very simple data load process now what we are going to implement is is we are uh, going to uh, redirect uh, all the error records which are encountered encountered while this load suppose we have a bad file where the employees uh, data uh, that is being consumed is, is, is not of the appropriate uh, type or there has been a trun uh, truncation errors so how are we going to uh, custom handle such records so that's what we are going to look at uh, before doing uh, anything let's just restore the file to its original location so I'm putting these files here right uh, now what we do for starters is we open our flat file connection manager let's open that and let's uh, take a look at the columns that we have uh, in the advanced connection manager tab what we see here is all the four columns that we have for the table alright so for EID we have uh, the data column type or the data type if you see it's of string uh, for a normal load it wouldn't cause any error as such but if we try to load it uh, if we are trying to redirect the records we have to restore this to the appropriate data type so let's uh, put this data type to INT we put it to 4 byte int data type so signed integer and salary also I am restoring this data type to 4 byte signed integer that's it that's for the first part now let's move on to the data flow task if we take a look at the data flow task of course this will ask uh, for a remap we say yes and we map it and we say ok so now let's open a toolbox and let's drag a OLEDB destination and put it over the window let's call it error next pull down the red arrow and drag and attach it to your OLEDB destination here you would be asked so for error and truncation for both of the options we say redirect rows which means we are going to redirect the row uh, to a table that's it so uh, the red arrow means the error records uh, now open the OLEDB destination error uh, uh, task and uh, let's say a new table on our database so while we click on the new tab it is it is going to uh, give you the metadata of, of the table that is uh, that will hold the records so let's use the metadata go to our SQL server paste it there and let's call the table load error so that's what I'm doing and also I am going to add one more uh, column to this table I call this
so this is going to be uh, the table where I'll be archiving all the error records while the load process is on I create this table that's okay now I cancel this and let's choose the table from the list so uh, if we drag it down we would be getting the load error table let's map it that's perfectly fine uh, the mapping of the input and the output columns uh, looks quite good for us uh, that's about it as far as the redirection of the error table or error record goes so we are good with the package now now let's go to the file in this file if we see we have three records for starters uh, the department uh, column in the employee table is of uh, I believe varchar 10 yeah it's for varchar 10 so what we do is we induce a truncation error so what we are going to do is we uh, induce a truncation error by writing the file right so we have the length of the department now more than 10 we save this and we close this for the next file that we have that is a file 1 what I do is I change the salary data type for uh, say the employee Larry what I do is I change the salary data type and save it and close it that's all so now I think for both the files we have one record which is error this this record is because of the salary data type and the next record is for the truncation error so we have an error and then a truncation error records so let's try to load both of this uh, file and try to process them we should be getting two records as an error right the error was because we forgot to truncate the employee table so let's try to truncate this table as we have so, okay so there's no more records in the employee let's try to rerun this SSIS package perfectly fine so both the files have been processed and archived at the location now let's try to go back to our SQL server and see how has the processing been so we have loaded five records out of seven and if we look at the load error table we find there have been two en uh, entries of different uh, of error codes so let's uh, try to reprocess both of them again I think we have loaded truncating both the tables once again so we see that there are two records one because of the data type mismatch and the other because of the load uh, truncation error and we have five records which have been loaded into our main table now what is the important uh, point to note in this load error table is the entire record is, is uh, gets loaded uh, as such which belongs to the flat file I mean the entire records with all the co relevant columns so it is uh, up to you to customize and identify the column if you want to uh, which actually has induced or, or which actually has the error 
so i hope this article or this blog is helpful to you guys thank you friends